Hello folks, welcome to my channel. I hope you all are doing great. Today I want to share an extraordinary experience. A journey that took me back in time to a place of profound historical significance. Hidden in the deep river Raya Valley, the beautiful and tranquil Rifo Abbey ruins reflect nearly 1000 years of spiritual, commercial and romantic history. It was a Cistercian abbey in Rivo, a tiny village whose population stands at around 100. It is near Helmsley in the North York Moors National Park. Public transportation does not have a direct connection to it. It is open from Thursday to Monday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Last entry is 30 minutes before close. There is an admission fee. Rifo Abbey was one of the greatest abbeys in England until it was seized in 1538 under Henry VIII during the dissolution of the monasteries. The abbey then entered its romantic period when its picturesque ruins became a beacon for poets, painters and scholars. Rivo Abbey was one of the wealthiest abbey in England. The ruins are now owned and maintained by English Heritage. According to the locals, this place is haunted. One can hear bells ringing. Though there are no bells at Rivo and haven't been for over 400 years, it is also said that chanting sounds are heard at dusk and a ghostly monk figure has been seen. The 15-acre site has the ruins and footprints of many monastic buildings in various stages of ruin. Some are full height, others are merely foundations. One of the best preserved original buildings is the Church Presbytery. It has an incredible wall of tired arches and columns, a testament to early English architecture. It is often used as a filming location and was used in the film Transformers The Last Night in 2017. The church lay at the center of monastic life and served two distinct communities. The eastern half, the presbytery, was used by the monks while the western parts of the church served the lay brothers. Chapter House was the second most important building in the monastery and was usually located near to the most important the abbey church. All the monks gathered inside it once a day. Not only did the monks meet here daily, but it was also the place where important guests were received and where monks took their vows. 
The Great Cloister is about 140 feet square and is one of the largest built by the Cistercians in Britain. The North Alley was used by the monks for reading and study, but the cloister also provided access to all of the surrounding monastic buildings. The West Range housed the lay brothers' accommodation. The East Range of the cloister led to the chapter house, parlor, dormitory and the day room. To the South were the warming house, refectory and kitchen. The infirmary on the east side of the monks' dormitory provided for the sick and the older members of the community. The infirmary had its own cloister for the use of sick and elderly monks. It was surrounded on all sides by an open arcade, a section of which has been reconstructed to show its original form. The Cistercian abbot originally slept in the dormitory with the rest of his community as stipulated in the 12th century customary of the order. It soon became common for abbots to have their own separate rooms or house adjoining or adjacent to the dormitory. The rooms beneath the monks' dormitory were probably used as a day room, providing space for the brethren to work and perhaps copy manuscripts. Oftentimes, the day room doubled as novices' house, but at Rivo, this was a separate building that adjoined the day room and could be accessed from it via a door in the southeast corner. The warming house lay in the southern range between the day room and refectory. This was a large room that was entered from the cloister. The warming house was so named as a large fire burned here during the day from 1st November until Good Friday, making this one of the warmest spots in the precinct. Whilst the warming house was used by the monks to warm themselves, the heat here meant that this was an appropriate place for scribes to prepare ink for their parchment and where shoes could be greased. Bloodletting, a restorative treatment that each monk received four times a year, was also carried out here. It was here that the monks gathered for their meals. They ate together, so like the church, the refectory had to be large enough to accommodate all of them. The kitchen of the abbey was a bustling hub of culinary activity. The new museum tells the story of Rivo Abbey from its foundation in 1132 to its suppression by Henry VIII and challenges preconceptions about monastic decline before the Reformation. It forms part of a 1.8 million pound investment by English Heritage into the site, completely transforming the experience and understanding of visitors to Rivo Abbey.
In conclusion, Revo Abbey stands as a poignant reminder of the rich tapestry of history, spirituality, and architectural brilliance. Its towering ruins evoke a sense of awe and wonder, inviting us to delve into the past and contemplate the lives and aspirations of those who once walked its hallowed halls. As we explore its remnants, let us cherish and protect these heritage sites ensuring that the legacy of Revo Abbey endures for future generations to appreciate and learn from. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of my content. See you soon.